welcome uh, mr bhandari to ipf uh, exclusive interview video interview uh, and uh, before we begin we would like you to you know, brief us about gate india uh, operations uh, in in terms of how many manufacturing unit you have what kind of products you manufacture and which industries you serve so uh, gates uh, in india has two entities one fully sub, you know 100% subsidiary of gates corporation us and uh, the other company is a jv what we have with the uh, nita corporation we call it gates unita so one uh, the fully owned subsidiary makes the uh, fluid power products and the power transmission company makes the power transmission products like belts tensioner pulleys so on so forth uh, we have overall four plants in india uh, one uh, uh plant is in uh, punjab one in faridabad which is in haryana other in pune maharashtra and uh, the fourth one is in chennai actually near chennai shri premadur is a place so we have a fourth plant there the chennai plant is engaged with the power transmission product line okay so out of the two the broad categories of product line that you spoke about for the power transmission and uh fluid power uh how much is the contribution from these two business units to overall gate india's uh, you know revenue and which is uh, in terms of problem which is doing much you know better than the it's it's practically you know equal you know it keeps varying four five percent up and down depending upon which customer is doing better or uh, which segment is doing better for us so depending upon that uh you know it keeps varying but uh, by and large i'll say it's equal yeah so, so in terms of have yeah. in Pune and Faridabad, they are the assembly plants. You know, uh, yeah. they do the finish assembly and supply to the OEMs. They are more engaged in the OEM activity, whereas mm -hmm. uh, the mother plant makes the bulk hose. You know, where uh, these hoses are converted is the assembly plant. Uh, mm -hmm. Same way for uh, the tensioner and the belt plant. You know, we make it in Chennai, but then you have warehouses near the uh, OEMs where they take the milk run. So that's how we cater uh, to the OEMs. Okay. So in terms of contribution from the end users, uh, if you broadly categorize it into auto, which also includes uh, off-road vehicles and a non-auto uh, industrial segment. So how how is the, how has been the demand from these two broad categories uh, for your products in last say one or two years? Uh, actually, over the past couple of years, uh, we have seen strong demand for both the product categories. Uh, we have launched and will continue to launch a number of uh, new products across both segments. You know that uh, differentiate us from from competition. Uh, we have a growing pipeline of opportunities, uh, which we expect to benefit from uh, the market opening up. You know, today it is little dull because of COVID thing, and all we all understand that. But as the markets open up uh, in second half of 2020 and beyond, uh, this will start showing up. Our sales team have uh, done a very well uh, job in terms of uh, selling value proposition uh, across the categories uh, to meet customer demand. Uh, to your question about uh, uh, you know, automotive hose, uh, automotive category and the uh, non-automotive, you know, anything else beyond that. So we, we actually participate in a uh, lot of segments. Uh, we are not confined to one segment as such. Uh, automotive is one, and then there is truck and bus, and then there is two wheeler. Uh, we also participate big time into construction equipment. And then uh, new built machineries, uh, like textile machinery, uh, machine tool industry. We also okay. participate in injection molding, uh, new build, and uh, uh, the the, the furnaces, you know, induction furnaces, uh, those kind mm -hmm. of companies also are our uh, OE customers. So it's a very wide uh, width we have. Mm -hmm. uh, to give a percentage will be very difficult because some industry goes up, some comes down. So it's not a fixed thing. I can say that even my planning becomes so difficult with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you just talk, spoke about, you know, construction equipment uh, industry. And probably that is also one of the big uh, contributors to all our business of Gates India. So how has mm -hmm. been the demand of uh, from the construction equipment side 
given the fact uh, that uh, the government has been emphasizing on uh, spending on the infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. So you are perfect. Uh, yeah. So we we see that very clearly. You know, uh, in general, uh, the uh, our prime minister, you know, Narendra Modi, keeps talking about a huge investment in infrastructure. You know, uh, he has been uh, talking about investing 100 lakh crore, something like that. It's a very big number in infrastructure. And I'm sure this will clearly benefit uh, us as well, because this is one of the key industries which we serve. Uh, our uh, specific performance in this market had been very good. Uh, despite last year being a little lull, if you really look at 2019, it was not very good for construction equipment industry. Uh, but how do for us it became well is we acquired new customers. We added new customers to our mm. list. So the okay. momentum decline here, you know, is was compensated by addition of new customers. Okay. So, uh, so what do you bring to the table for the, you know, uh, the construction equipment segment? Given the fact there is an overall emphasis from the end users towards energy efficiency, the fuel efficiency, and making their vehicle lighter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to your point, you know, what we, we bring uh, to give a little technological uh, you know, story today happening in uh, in construction equipment industry, especially, you know, is uh, the uh, the need for the uh, light weighting, you know, uh, is very important today uh, because of the, again, carbon emission norms are coming in. Even this industry is going towards the BS4 uh, now. Hmm. So, uh, you know, it got little deferred, but it is going to come in. It's not going to be like, uh, not going to come in or can be deferred further. We know very well uh, the government is very serious about it. The uh, Gates product, the new launches I talked about uh, are light in weight, uh, by, you know, as I as uh, one third light in weight, you know, it, uh, the weight of the product has gone down by that much. Number two, flexibility. The engine size are reducing. You know, if you look at the, the machines are becoming compact. So right. you require flexible uh, products, products which can, you know, join very the two ports. Let's say in uh, fluid power, the machine mm. has become compact. So you require tighter bend radius. So you require flexibility, and that's where we come into play. And Gates, being a system supplier, uh, OEMs mm. don't want to deal with uh, child part supplier. You, know, you get one from here and get two from there, and then later on when there is a leak. You don't know from where it is leaking who's responsible for it they want a system supplier with a repute and gates is one of it you know we do entire system and uh, mm -hmm. we provide uh, guarantee warranty to our oems and they love to deal with us that's how we are adding every year uh, one of two uh, big oems to us okay and what about your power transmission product business how, how what is driving that business so power transmission is a very similar story happening. You know, we uh, just now we went for BS6 in uh, automotive. Uh, mm -hmm. So huge uh, development with the OEMs. You know, last two years was so busy uh, on uh, developing the uh, OEM qualification to the BS6. Uh, and uh, we deal with practically every big OEMs in the automotive space. So uh, that's the change which brought in a lot of technologically advanced product from Gates. So there the th in thing is carbon emission. You know, you have to reduce carbon emission or maybe your fuel efficiency has to go up. That's how mm. you can bring down the carbon emission. And our product supports the OEM towards that. You know, we, we are uh, into highly advanced products uh, for engine tuning products, uh, for our products like BSG, you know, uh, uh, bell starter generator uh, that's uh, new technology you know uh, uh, we are supporting the big oems into that so that's how we bring in technologically advancement earlier in india there was like india was considered as uh, not a uh, technology savvy product adoption but today if you look at india has a very quick adoption of technology and uh, probably uh, with the price sensitivity around we are very competitive yeah. okay uh, you know uh, what are the key challenges that industries across uh, the manufacturing segments are facing today, and uh, and how is Gates, uh, you know, helping them to overcome these challenges? 
uh, if I've understood your uh, uh, question, is that the challenges industry is facing today? Yeah, the user industry is facing today, and how Gates is helping them to overcome these challenges. Yeah. So as I said, you know, the the technological need today of the customer is light weighting, emission controls, flexibility in the products, uh, and uh, even our OEMs would like to differentiate you know, from competition. So what we do is uh, we, we develop uh, continuously new products and new innovative products in our range with the help of our material science with a huge R&D investment, what Gates does on, R you know, uh, on the engineering side. We are continuously bringing in those kinds of products which helps the OEM to meet and beat the basic norms and then differentiate themselves with the competition. So that's how we get engaged with all the key industry players uh, today. So the industry has these problems and we are there to solve it. You know, we are like a partner. We work like partners with all our customers and uh, they are the ones who get benefited with all these new innovations we bring in. One of the trends in the industry is moving towards the intelligent products, uh, IoT compliant products. Uh, mm -hmm. How is Gates, uh, you know, uh, catering to these needs of the of the market. So, uh, as you said, you know, the, the, these these uh, systems nowadays are not standalone anymore. Uh, they are a closed loop system. It helps other uh, uh, subsystems to get efficient. And uh, we are absolutely aligned to that. And uh, we offer in that, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I think briefly I mentioned about tuning of uh, the engines. So what does that tuning means is basically the engine variability which gets, you know, any engine will have variability. So it fine tunes it so that the the engine performance, the output, the efficiency which comes out of the engine is not in a variable form. So it fine tunes the engine and you get a continuous feed. As a result, your vehicle performance or your experience with your vehicle improves. You have a smooth ride to say in a, in a layman language, you have a smooth ride. We don't come to know what all is happening inside the engine. You know, it, it all is uh, kind of uh, input to some other subsystem who in turn helps some other uh, subsystem. And ultimately, customer experience is a smooth ride. Right. Uh, and economic. Uh, yeah. So uh, the the COVID and the 19 pandemic has you know, uh, affected uh, the industry, uh, affected all the industries. So how it has affected your business at present? So uh, consider something like this, you know, clearly the broad shutdown in India is uh, affecting all businesses right now. When businesses reopen, uh, our operation teams will be ready to go immediately. Uh, we have applied for all the uh, permissions to, you know, to go ahead and start serving the customer, start uh, the plant operation. Even though the physical buildings are closed, our commercial team have been finding creative ways to stay connected with our customers mm -hmm. digitally. The, the way you are, you know, you, you did not find a barrier uh, uh, to meet and take an interview. We are also learning. Yeah, we are also quickly, up, you know, upskilling ourselves to interact with our customer in a more digital way. Uh, as such, we have visibility into how we can support them now. And when the lockdown is rolled back, you know, we have to be the first one uh, to support our customer. So that's the entire mindset and, and we are working towards it. The team is fully engaged uh, with all our uh, customers. So have you, uh, the government has already started uh, uh, giving permissions in some states uh, to restart industries and factories. So have you started uh, operationalizing your factories? Yeah, so two of the plants are already operational. And other two are, uh, you know, in different stage of approval because uh, you have to get a first plant open, opening approval, then manpower, movement approval. All that is in the process. Yeah. So which two plants are operational now? Uh, Parizabad and Pune plant are operational. Okay. So, so what is your, uh, uh, what is going to be your recovery strategy uh, for Gates India, given the fact that now slowly, slowly the economy, the, the economic activity will start uh, gearing up. And mm -hmm. uh, so, so how, what's your 
going to be the strategy to restart your uh, growth in uh, growth uh, path? How do you intend to take that on the growth path? So uh, I, I got your point. You know, basically what you are saying is uh, after COVID, how are you going to uh, uh, to react or something like that? Correct. So. Uh, we have a, you know, being a global company, one benefit we get is we come to know what's happening in other markets. In this case, uh, as the China market has reopened, so have our facilities there. We are fully up and running. You know, we can take uh, what has worked there and apply it to uh, our uh, other regions, you know, globally as the world recovers from the pandemic. Uh, so there, there are good amount of learnings, you know, we, uh, from the other countries like China, Korea. Uh, which uh, we are going to be using it and uh, you know all that social distancing and sanitizing and ensuring safety of our employees uh, so that a safe product reaches the customer all that is being followed very religiously so to the point what i said earlier two plants operational and two other plants though they the plant has not started production but we are on a trial run trial run of mm -hmm. how will we operate in uh, you know when the real production starts so we are doing trials there, safe distancing mm -hmm. between people, sanitizing when they eat, all that safety precautions, you know, there has to be a safe distance between them, uh, covering up masks, mm -hmm. it, it's all new behavior, you know. Right, right. So, uh, so has uh, the COVID-19 forced you to recalibrate uh, your growth plans for 2020, given the fact that at the start of the year, there was no COVID-19 on the horizon. So uh, I'll only say, you know, a little differently that Gates headquarters had been very supportive of India. They strongly believe in India's story and support us, back us very strongly uh, for, with the opportunities that India present for the company. Uh, we have been investing in the business here to support our growth and that story will continue. These kind of temporary setbacks in between uh, will come and go uh, in a country like India. I think uh, companies fully committed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rajesh Bhandari, to uh, spend your time with IPF and sharing your valuable views on the industry and uh, Gates India's operations. Thank you for it. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Rao. Uh, uh, I'm glad that you know uh, a new experience again. You know, we do uh, audio visual like we do with our customers now. Media interaction also becomes like it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day.